Welcome to Fangs Out. This is your host Frank the Vamp, and uh, welcome to uh, Mental Illnesses Month, where we're pretty much discussing horror movies that has to has something to do with uh, uh, mental disturbances. Uh, it can be about mental disturb killers. It's it's rather broad because it can also encompass. Uh, you know, a, a warped reality of somebody seeing it a certain way, uh, mental asylum situations, even haunting of mental asylums, or, or or just, or sometimes where you don't know if you're here, if you're looking at reality, or you're looking at the fantasy of a disturbed mind. I was being fascinated by it. Uh, I remember when I was a young college student and. And one of my first uh, experiences in college uh, was um, because I'm um, uh, I've, before I become I became a journalist. I liked dabbling into sciences, so I wanted to uh, you know do biochemistry. So I had a biochemistry degree, and I had to take a lot of science classes. And one of them was a, a mental health class, and uh, the mental health class was basically. Um, we went through a lot of. We went through a unit which had a lot of the the, the mental illness, um, uh, you know, from I mean, tons of uh, paranoia, schizophrenia, uh, you know, aggressive, maniacal, uh, all kinds of. Um, you know, we went through a little bit of the bipolar, um, and. and we just had a lot on our plate and I remember that one of the things that made the most impact was uh, we, we actually watched a case of an actual person, we watched real video of an actual mental patient that uh, he was a schizophrenic uh, you know, patient and he was basically, he truly believed okay, that, he, that he was a government agent and uh, he believed that he knew certain about the government that shouldn't be known and uh, he was um, you know he could describe his conspiracy theories which make no sense whatsoever but you know but the, the thing about it is that the way he would say it and, and he even will say he will say well the reason I'm here it's because you know they, they, you know people, you know don't believe me. They they don't believe my story, but I am telling you the truth. He really believed that you know his conspiracy theory was true. Uh, they interviewed his relatives and stuff, and all his relatives were saying, "No, this dude's nuts." Basically, he's been a, I think he was like a librarian or something, and and he kept to himself on read books, but. According to him, you know, when you interview him, he has this love of life, very elaborate. He could tell you things that never happened, but according to him, happened. And, and hallucinations that he can see, but nobody else could, and so on. Which it's horrifying, you know, for the person that's going through it and for the relatives and the people who share the environment. Because they don't know how this dude's gonna react, you know. They don't know if this guy it's it's going to, um, you know, live a normal life where he just leaves his fantasy out, or he thinks that you know he's being chased by a government agent, therefore he's gonna defend himself by pulling a knife and stabbing him, or shooting him in the head, uh, you know, because he believes he, you know, he has, you know, he has the, uh, because he's a government agent, which he's not. So, very scary stuff. Which points me to my first movie of the month, which is 12 Monkeys. Now, 12 Monkeys is, you know, quite an awesome movie inspired by a short, uh, a 1962 called La, Jet La Jete, or La Jet, I can't pronounce it very well, you know, this word, but, well, basically, it's the movie as well as the film you know, they both tell you the story of a person that supposedly, uh, you know, travels travels back in time. He's a, you know, he, he played by Bruce Willis, and 
basically that he travels back in time so he can gather information uh, because in the future uh, a terrorism bioterrorism attack has happened and uh, basically wiped out most of you know humanity uh, except exists for a few survivors that live underground and uh, you know Bruce Willis is sent as an agent to find out a, you know information about who is the army of the 12 monkeys who is the one who did the attack who released the virus why did they do it how can they you know and he's basically there to gather information you know but unfortunately because time travel I guess is not exact he's sent to the wrong year and he's sent to early or something like that and, and then he's captured um, and, and he tells a story to the uh, the authorities and of course they don't believe him why would they right uh, it's just a nut job right so he's put into a mental institution and there you know a doctor uh, you know is trying to you know convince him of reality and, and says dude you're suffering the Cassandra complex okay uh, the Cassandra complex is, is, is basically a terminology of the uh, you know of uh, Egypt Egypt, uh, Egypt, I'm sorry, Greek mythology, and uh, that tells you that uh, you know this this person Cassandra, this goddess Cassandra, I guess uh, she she was given the power of knowing the future, but her punishment was because I think she she you know cut off the advances of a god I can't remember exactly, but the thing about it is that. It, her punishment was that she, even though she knew the outcome she was doomed to be unable to prevent it so imagine how horrible it would be that you're you're being sent back in time because you know like somebody's gonna pff, do something horrible right you don't know wipe out the whole humanity and you know how to do that and you start telling people dude help me out and everybody's looking at you like you're out of your mind and they arrest you and then you can't do it and then he comes in so you're basically useless so that's why you know you know the doctor that is treating well is just pretty much telling him you know you're from this and uh, there you know is Brad Pitt who supposedly is the uh, you know, leader of the uh, of the people that is going to infect um, you know the world in you know this sci-fi horror film just has so you know really really cool things because all the way to almost the end as you get uh, because there's a lot of things that they you know travel back and forth of willis between the time and then it, it really keeps you guessing is bruce willis really a time traveler or is he just nuts you know, will he be able to prevent, you know, the outcome or not? And or it's just it's just, just a whole fantasy being played out in the mind of a maniac, of a, of a mentally ill person. Um, yeah, I don't like to say maniac, I'm sorry. You know, because, uh, because that's the thing. There's a lot of, I think that, you know, as Alex brought it up, and this is very important. People who are, you know, suffering from these illnesses, a lot of the times don't realize it. And most of the time, in a very cruel manner. You know, I don't know what you, what are your belief are or something, but there's something called compassion. And these people should be treated with some high degree of compassion because to them, they sometimes they might even be aware of the situation. Sometimes they, they can't be because they're so entrapped in their own fantasy. So, you know, and, and, th and thanks again to, I have to give credit to Alex, uh, you know, one of my, my subscribers, and, and I dedicate this whole month to him because he was so brave about bringing his own, uh, you know, you know, mental illness, you know, bottle that he's got and, and, and how he's recovered and be able to cope with, you know, life. And that's great. And you know what? 
I that's the thing that most people, believe it or not, most people do have some kind of degree of off, of offness in their mental balances. I mean, so there, so believe it or not, there's a lot of people that may be walking around that never realize they do have some type of mental illness. You know, you could, t- I mean, uh, obsessive compulsive. Like I wash my hands uh, like twenty times a day. And I, I spoke to a doctor about it. Yeah, it turns out, you know, that's kind of like a, that's that's a compulsive disorder. That either that's a mental illness. I mean, something like that that you think might be small. And and the, and there's some I have to do some mental exercises, so I don't do that because I'm like a germ freak. Like I can, you know, like I have a thing to, you know, touch germs and, and things like that. And there's a lot of people who suffer from those. That's why I'm so fascinated with this, you know, with this subject. And I thought that it would be a good one. But coming back to the movie, I think the movie's greatest thing is, is just to keep you guessing whether you're in reality or not. The movie has vivid, scary images. It's more of a sci-fi, but, you know, the, the fact of being trapped in a mental institution and... and uh, and uh, and and the tortures that go on in there, and the horribleness, and, uh, and and to change, you know, what seems to be a doom scenario, it's all very unnerving. So I mean, this movie will keep you on the edge of your seat from beginning to end. Absolutely recommend Twelve Monkeys. Now, you know, for our next sample of. Cinema greatness. Um, you know, since I have another series that you know that that uh, has been going on at the same time, which is the Silence of the Lambs. Um, we're gonna kind of combine the two, and we are going to go into Hannibal Lecter's territory. And I haven't decided which one, if we're going with Silence of the Lambs or we're going with um, Manhunter or the other one. I can't think of the name of the other one now. Um, But we'll go there. We'll totally go in there and stay tuned for a lot, lot, lot more material for, you know, mentally, mental illnesses month. Stay tuned for more. Take it easy.